Hey, how you doing? This is Michael Seven Michael. We also have Ranger from SCV Network, and we are now with you watching part two <laughs> <laughs> with uh, William Ramos Jr. and Eric Rivera from Section Eight Comics. I got it out. <laughs> Almost didn't, but I got it out. How you guys doing? Good. 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 So we're now talking about Ninja Mouse. Yes, Ninja Mouse was the uh, the comic book that we create that was done in 24 hours, or was attempted to be done in 24 hours as part of the 24 hour comic challenge. That would had eventually became our first comic book printed under the Section Eight banner because we after I after I did it, it kind of sat in a draw for a while, and we we're saying what are we going to do with this thing and. Eric and I was talking about, let's do a comic book company together. Why not have this be the first book? Right. And we printed it out. Oh, and wait. Ninja Mouse was the first? Yes, yeah, the first, the very wow. first Section 8, well, with the Section 8 comic imprint right. on it. Gotcha. Because when we first started, we were starting out as kind of a studio service to everybody else. We would, mm -hmm. Whatever gaps you had, we could fill. If you had a pencil or a writer, or didn't have an inker or, or a colorist, we could fill that in. Even if we didn't do it ourselves, we knew enough people in the industry that we could get it done. And one of the things that we were getting into was like, well, there's a lot of the, uh, printers out there, so let's try testing some things. And we're like, well, what are we gonna print? We can't just print anything. And it was like, well, we have that comic book that you made in 24 hours. And we started using that as our test print. I was like, this is actually pretty good. And we started saying, well, we can start doing our own books. This, mm -hmm. is, this is not as difficult as everybody made it seem. Getting, making the book itself and printing it is not the hard part. It's getting it to the audience that's the hard part. Right. Yeah, so it turned out that when we were working for other companies, they just made it sound like this is really hard to do. Mm -hmm. And then when we did it ourselves, it was like, well, this was actually kind of easy. And it's easier even now than before because of things that we have access to, the print-on-demand companies, uh, the, the internet itself. Digital distribution. Digital distribution. So we're on Comixology. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're trying new things all the time. And the first thing that came from it was Ninja Mouse. Is this you? That yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we did, for a little while, we did an online comic strip, uh, basically working in the industry, all the different things you work on. I mean, I think we, we said they're true stories, <laughs> exaggerated, but those stories are true mm -hmm. about us as a studio trying to make comic books. Yeah. And that's, that's what my main bread and butter has been, is working uh, as a letterer for, very, for, all, for a lot of companies. I could almost say I probably worked for every company at least once or twice. All together. So I, I, I love this. Oh. I, I would definitely have fell in love with this as a kid because I was so caught up in the panels. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was but, the thing. It was yeah. just, without words on there, you're really relying on, on the storytelling. And mm -hmm. there is some text in it because uh, you just need it for the narration right. itself. But there's it's no one speech, of those there's things. Si there's signs in there. Right. So there's things in there. So, yes, it is an easy reader book. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. Ladies and gentlemen, I too <laughs> could actually read. <laughs> <laughs> See? And y'all said there's nothing that seven can read. Nope. <laughs> Section 8 Ninja Mouse. <laughs> exactly. See any words? No. <laughs> but I'm reading what's going on. <laughs> Stories that words and pictures is what comics is all about. It, it, it's I feel good about myself. I'm so sincere. Because <laughs> people are like, ah, oh, you know, you should take some time to read. Now I can. And that's the best thing about comics. And most people I know, first thing they read was comics. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how they got their vocabulary. You know, there are things in there, adamantium. That's a long word. So it's not like, <laughs> it's not like they're giving a short kind of stuff. That, right. You know, long thing. So with, with the well, creation I mean, of Ninja if, Mouse, if you look at it, some of, of those the original comic books, some of the story concepts were just allegories for what was going on in the real world, and like there were real ideas and stuff like that that was were more approachable for kids to say like, well, yeah, I relate to this, I relate to that, and mm -hmm. they were used. They didn't talk down to kids, which is one of the things I liked about a lot of the comic books. I mean. I don't read now like kid comic books, but I know all the Spider Mans, the X Men, mm -hmm. Wolverine, all that stuff. They didn't talk down to you. It was just we're gonna tell a story and just hopefully hop on in and enjoy. Exactly. And if what, it was a word you didn't know, you went and looked it up on the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. What is there anything that you guys are into besides your own comic books that you're within? I guess the Greek world, the geek world, um, that you jump uh, into. 
like that, video that, games, animation, <laughs> more films. All of it. You yeah, know? like it, I said, it, I'm an all around geek. I mean, like, what's called after this, I'm gonna go home and play Overwatch. Um, I was caught. I was watching anime this morning. <laughs> so I which, mean, like, which one? Uh, this morning, I, it's a new one. I, I saw on Crunchyroll. It's something called Akashic Bastard or something like that. It's a I don't remember the full name, but it's basically a new teacher in a magic school and. Mm. When he first gets there, they think he doesn't actually know how to teach, but he's just lazy. <laughs> he's just like what's called, every class is like what's called, this is going to be self-study. And then he just goes to sleep. And then there's more adventures that you find out that this guy's actually like a former military mage. And that was called, um, he's just tired of fighting. So like what's called, like there's a whole like backstory that they're introducing and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And Ranger, can you co-sign on that one or no? Co-sign? Yeah. yeah. I haven't. It's a brand new one. Like, a, yeah. a, it's on episode six. Like I, 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 there's a similar anime. I honestly can't recall the name, but it has like the same premise mm. where it's this um, really intelligent guy who like graduated college at like the age of 15, and he was like um, a physicist. And he has all these ideas, but he just doesn't work because he's so sucked into anime. It's like it's anime <laughs> about anime. Right. And so he finally gets a job as a teacher, but he doesn't want to teach. So he just has like the kids play games on their phone. <laughs> he's just doing whatever he wants. And it's basically generally like the same thing. Yeah. Well, one of the things I liked about anime over um, American cartoons is that anime has no boundaries in the sense of what they'll do. Right. I like the fact that you can go to an animation cartoon and it'll be a love story or it could be in a fantasy world or it could be a superhero mm -hmm. or it's like and they'll do Whatever anything they and they, they realize that what's called like hey you know it's whatever we pay for the animation is the same no matter what the special effects are it's mm -hmm. not like we got to make a dragon in real life and then a car they, it's like it's the same throughout so they treat it as a, a viable medium for everything we're slowly getting into that but right now it's mainly adven adventure and uh comedy, comedy. Mm -hmm. we haven't gotten a dramatic cartoon yet I think when that happens, that'll be the real break in American society where it was called like, oh, ca cartoons can be anything that we want them to be. Right. I think with, with Netflix doing their own cartoons, I, they'll, eventually I'm hoping will be a time where you will have uh, a creator own project where they're not worried about changing anything. Uh, Star Trek is a great model that you could have anything happen in Star Trek, but at the end of the day, the main crew members must be alive and the ship is going to the sunset. Right. Mm -hmm. Status quo. Where. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, but... don't want to hear guy one and guy two. You know they're going to die. <laughs> well, yeah. Right. I mean, even in the films. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Even the new films, they <laughs> basically did the same thing. Yes, if you're wearing a red shirt, you're going to go. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's why I never re wear red in real life. <laughs> oh, really? I don't want to be somebody else's extra. Oh, <laughs> I actually heard um, that yellow shirts are like, actually diet more often than the red shirts. Probably in the next generation but because it's Because more like, the red shirts are more prone to being in danger than the yellow shirts. Something, <laughs> something to that effect. It's like, That's interesting. Yeah, because I know blue is medical, red is like security and... Um, what, was yellow, what was yellow science? And yellow... Yellow is command. Yellow is command, yeah. Okay. So, I think red is... Uh, or, like, I heard. Uh, <laughs> 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 but it's more likely to die because they're just more... You have the outfits at home. <laughs> I, I do not them. own the outfits. I do have some weapons and faders. Right. Right. <laughs> but I... Uh, but I, I did, did you get the communicator that um, works with your cell phone? No. It does the We Bluetooth? thought about it. We thought about it, but... Eventually, there's a point in, in my own geekdom that it's like, I have to stop buying a lot of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And so much better stuff is coming out, too. So I, I feel like it, it, it is amazing there's so many things out there that are better now than it was when I was growing up. It's like, oh, I would have loved to have this. I would have loved to have that. I would throw this out there. If anyone could find the original, um, um, what is it called? Return of the Jedi lightsaber. The ones where... It was, um, it's vintage, but I want to get one of those. It's plastic. You mean like the blow-up plastic that they had? No, it's hard plastic. Oh, okay. But the end of it has four holes that when you move it, it makes, it makes a sound. Oh, okay. And, I, and I'm still trying to find, you know what I'm talking about, right? And I'm still trying to find the original Luke Skywalker um, Return of the Jedi with the black... Cause That's it, because I, 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 I got all these lightsabers. I, I had to bow out because they started making too many Jedi. 
Yeah, <laughs> there's so many things that. So yeah. now when I do buy a Star Wars item, mm -hmm. I would buy an R2D2. That that is now my Star Wars thing. So I have a bunch of R2s. Do Do you have the one like this tall? Not the tall ones. I have the basically the small packages that I okay. can like kind of run into fairly easy, mm -hmm. and then that represents my Star Wars stuff. And then for like anything comic book. I turn book, him around backwards and shun him when he's at his. <laughs> when he's at his. <laughs> <laughs> <turn him> <laughs> anything, anything Batman, <laughs> I just get the original 1966 Batmobile. That's my favorite oh. one. So I have that. And it's like, so I decided there will be certain things I'll get now that will mm. represent the whole of that particular genre or that particular item. So this way here, I'm not in the. It just, just I have so much stuff. Is I, I'm now selling a lot of it, just mm -hmm. because there's just so much of it. And now that I, because of as being an all around geek, I have Star Wars stuff. I have Star Trek stuff. I have comic book stuff, and then the comic book paraphernalia stuff. So you, the comic book toys, their comic book art, and just so many things that I realize is like I, I'm not making a museum. <laughs> I don't really need this right. stuff. I loved having it, so let me sell it. And then use that money to just fund to more, more of my stuff. own <laughs> my own stuff. So you hear about now, the guy that has comic. the largest collection of video games in the world? No. He just sold it, actually. His collection? His collection is the... Um, and GameStop the, offered him, what, 77 cents? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. It, it went, I, I think, like, $700,000. Something wow. ridiculous. But that's the thing. Everyone has something that they love right. and they want. To collect, yeah, I, and, and I think that's just. I, I, I don't know if it's just something that's I in do, our genetic makeup, like being an artist is, because everyone's yeah. born an artist. I think we're trained to do that. To be creative. Yes, I, I to think collect. We, yeah, it's collecting art. If you think um, about it. Yeah, I think there. I think there. Together. I think there's something in us that was called when we. It's basically there's this dopamine effect where we like this thing. We liked it a lot. It felt, made us feel good. Mm. Well, this may not be that same thing, but it reminds me of that. So this also makes me feel mm. good. Mm. So it's like what's called like, um, there's there's a reason why it was called uh, for a while. I remember when the Smurfs came out, there were Smurfs everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And it was like, I never liked the cartoon, but I was just, it's just like I'm surrounded by them everywhere. It's just just thing. But it's something that everybody you find something that reminds you of like the thing that you liked, and you just mm. wanted to. And I, I get it, business-wise, you want to capitalize mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. But it always has this this peak point where, you know, like with the Smurfs, there's supposed to be 101 Smurfs. Really supposed to be 100 Smurfs, but then they made like some baby or something. Well, so there was they, 100 Smurfs, then they mm -hmm. made a Smurfette, then they made a baby Smurf, then they made the Smurf Kids. All within the series of the cartoons. But the Smurfs kids were regular Smurfs that were turned into kids. Right, so... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> the Smurfs kids... <laughs> we were kids at this point, so we actually watched this. <laughs> right. If I remember correctly, and I watched it last week. <laughs> went into a clock or something, and they de-aged. Oh. Hmm? Baby Looney Tunes. Oh, uh, well, well, they were... They were... The um, Looney Tunes, they were babies, though. Well, kids, it teenagers. Yeah. Oh. So, and again, it, it, it's going for that dollar, you know. Yeah. It, it's yeah. definitely part of that, you know. Uh, you, oh. You have to make that balance. Do you know who started that first within the, this is like, again, TV geekdom. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. What show started that template that has been used by The Cosby Show? It's been used by um, Family Matters? Actually, Full House, almost every TV show, oh, including the Brady Bunch, has used that. I'm going to add, once everything gets kind of like boring, they mm -hmm. add a, a, some adopted kid or someone gets pregnant and has a kid. Which show that you think did that, at least to my knowledge, did that first? I Love Lucy. I Love Lucy, yeah. There you go. Little yeah. Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm bummed. I feel good about myself. Yeah. <laughs> That's the earliest one, earliest one I can think of. That, that would probably be the earliest one to, to start that, yeah. I would suspect. I actually thought you were going to ask what started the toy craze. Oh, Star Wars, collecting. I mean. Yeah, because it, it was one of those things where Star Wars was so popular that they were able to sell kids in a cardboard box with the pictures of the characters because they didn't have time to produce the toys. Right. They had no idea how Lay popular away. it would be. 
yeah, yeah. it was basically a layaway program that yeah. worked you know and before that you didn't really have true action figures and Planet he had a hundred percent of the rights too that was there and he got the rights because the toys never sold because right. before and, that Planet of the Apes was the only toy deal mm -hmm. oh. and it didn't make any money wow. so when Lucas said or as the story or as the legend goes when Lucas says hey you don't <laughs> I'm not getting money from this. Let me get the money for the toys. And they built an empire. Right. You know, so Literally. That, figuratively yeah. also. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, so uh, generated about a billion dollars. Actually over a billion. I think it's over a billion. I, I would say over a billion. Yeah. And, oh, and that's oh. the thing. It's like, here's someone who had an idea and put it together. And it's the same thing. That well, we I'll say it time. right now. Then I get any more of my money <laughs> with these movies they just put out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, it's funny because uh, <laughs> the thing is that what he did, which was great and certain businesses do, is that it's self-generating because you basically have, we made a movie that made the toys famous. <laughs> we sell the toys. That makes us money so that we can make another movie. And I keep making more toys that keep, mm -hmm. and it just. And that just, was the, the thing. And that for a long time, the toys were the only thing that kept generating Star Wars. It eventually... When I, was, when I was younger and I would think back about Star Wars, it was very stuck in the 70s, mm -hmm. you know, because everyone's hairstyle is still that way. The music <laughs> reminds you. But at a certain point, right before the prequels, it broke away from being stuck in that time period, and it became timeless. So now when, you think, like, now when I think of Star Wars, I don't think of the 70s anymore. You know, or the, even the 70s version of the Star Wars theme song that played all over the place. Oh, my God. Especially in ho when I remember dressing up in Halloween and no matter where you went, they always played that disco version of the theme song. <laughs> so in my head, when I think of Star Wars, that, that theme song always mm -hmm. popped up and it was always part of it. How are you a fan? Because that song is horrible. It is <laughs> because I'm a fan of everything else. <laughs> so I go through like my phases where it's like, OK, I'm Star Wars out. Yeah. Star Trek's my thing again, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. a new movie came out or whatever. Right. And, and so well, I started let me collecting ask you this, Wilson. That. Would you, um, is there a medium that you would stay away from when it comes to, like, would you stay away from a TV version? Would you stay away from film, animation? I, now that I've gotten older, mm. things don't bother me as much. Uh, or I don't care anymore. I'm not too sure what it is. And, and again, to be specific, I mean in reference to the characters that you guys create for Section 8. Is there a deal or a medium that you say, we are not doing whatever that is? Porn? Um, <laughs> no, I mean... The porn, the porn version of Section 8? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there um, is... I, I think that was called, there isn't really a medium. I think it would have to be more along the lines of who we would work with. It's not an issue of the medium itself, because I don't mm -hmm. think there's a, per se a bad medium. I think it's more along the lines of like, well, I don't want to deal with that company. I don't trust what they're going to do with our characters and stuff like that. In my mind, I always thought that the more control we have as creators, mm -hmm. I'm almost willing to try anything out with it. Ninja Mouse would work fine as a cartoon. Mm -hmm. Where Star's Edge, I think, would work better as an HBO TV series. Uh, that's that's a weekly show type of thing. Star's Edge is our story of uh, basically a space gladiator. So like what's called um, a guy who is kidnapped from Earth, t forced to fight in arenas in space. And the idea of like what's called, we, we kind of jump around in the storyline, but like we could that in an HBO series, you could go like through the actual progression and see how he went from being a person who's trying to become a healer and a doctor and turned into what's called uh, a fighter and how he had, who he's forced to kill. Mm -hmm. You could build that over a story arc in what's called uh, on the HBO show. I'm not sure I would necessarily want to kiddify that one, that particular story, and make it like a Saturday morning cartoon style. Right. Right. But then we would have Team Kaiju, which is our cyborgs that fight monsters, would work fine as an animated series. Mm -hmm. right. So. And you have a real frog, not like that fake. Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna name that other brand. <laughs> but uh, you, yeah, you got like a real frog going on there. <laughs> is is the mark your Deadpool? Um, no. It's, the mark is our Jerry Seinfeld, the superhero. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best he, one. He is basically his stories take place um, in between the adventures. Okay. I would say where it's more of a comedic look to superheroes mm -hmm. and more of to a superhero who believes he's the best hero he is. In his mind, but he's not. But he's not. 
So here's a person who lives in a world that there are superheroes and he decides, I'm going to be a superhero too. And he has no powers. Uh, he has no money because mm -hmm. uh, he's not Batman. But he's doing the best he can with what he has. And so that's a more comedic look into the, the superhero genre. Yeah, itself. the writer for that, um, his name is Jason Antolik. And he basically was like, he worked in a comic book shop at, at the time that he came up with the concept. And he's just like, there's not really, a, in his mind, a good comedic comic book. So he was like, what's called? Like, I'm like, well, what would you do? And he started telling me his ideas. And I just said, you know what? Write me up some scripts and I'll see if I can get done. And that's what we, and that's how we ended up doing the mark. And a lot of our books are kind of like that, where I came in with some ideas, Eric came in with some ideas, and then the people that we brought in, uh, a lot of the guys that we work with have either we worked with before, uh, who are in the industry as well, who mm -hmm. wanted to do their own stuff, mm -hmm. or wanted to do stuff with us, um, because they saw that they weren't really getting work anywhere else, because one thing or another happens. Right. You know, right. sometimes um, they... They just didn't get that in somewhere. Yeah, I mean, that... on the studio side, because of all the connections we've made, it's funny because like what's called, uh, you currently won how many awards this year? Three? This year, I won four awards. Four awards. And... <laughs> I like how you say that. But... How many awards you win this year? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I got an Oscar, I have, Emmy, I have, uh, a I Tony. I haven't won any Maybe awards. Maybe a Grammy. Up to this point, I have never won any awards. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But that's the weird thing. Up to this point, I've been nominated, but I never won any awards. Uh -huh. This year, just so happens, four come in at the door at the same time, mm -hmm. and it's wild. But it's because of the, the work that I've been doing all over the place. I'm not mm -hmm. sticking to one company. So um, one of the awards is for Stan Lee's God Woke graphic novel that I did coloring and lettering. And mm -hmm. um, the company Shatner Singularity, which is an imprint by William Shatner, I'm working with uh, Mariano Nicieza. He used to be an editor at Marvel, and he does uh, comic books, but he's worked with William Shatner for a number of years, mm -hmm. so he helped William create a, um, an imprint for his projects. So you have uh, Man of War, uh, which turns into the War Chronicles, and so that project was being done in conjunction with l, &L Studios, which does um, cinematic graphic novels. So we're basically taking the artwork from a comic book and just doing some motion effects and sound effects, uh, music. Voiceover is only a narration at the beginning by William Shatner. So that particular book concept won an award. Later on, we took a project that Stan Lee wrote in the 70s, mm -hmm. a uh, poem that he wrote called God Woke. And it's about God basically his relation with man, his relation with himself. And it's a beautiful poem. Right. So we took that and Fabian Nicieza, who's the uh, co-creator of Deadpool, wrote basically a comic book version of this poem. And so myself and a few other artists that, uh, we're, that, that we know together did some of the artwork. I did the lettering, I did the coloring. I was the art director on the book, so I got to design a book um, that is just this beautiful hardcover book that won an award that I wasn't even know that it was available. Now, and anybody then, on internet land, I'm going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. you got to be honest with the answer, okay? Because okay. we're going to run out of time. Okay. <laughs> and nobody on internet land or TV land, because we're on the internet and on television, <laughs> don't steal this idea. So I have a character. It's a woman, because I need more positive, strong women, you know. You should read Team Kaiju by us. <laughs> Our superpower is toe jam. Okay, that's super. Because no one's ever done this before. So you want it? Oh you stole it from me. Okay. All right, I got this woman. Superpower is toe jam. I want to work with you guys. What happens? How do I find you? How do I look you up? Do I go to your website? And then how do we create something bomb? Let's make this happen. Toe jam. <laughs> Well, our website is d8spot.com and what? d8spot.com. D T H E. The. Oh, T the. Eight spot.com. The number okay. eight spot.com. Okay. And uh, we have actually um, a section where you can contact us with uh, submissions and stuff like that. Um, when we're working with other people, a lot of times we, I tell them don't send me um, 
full scripts or anything like that. If you want to send, send me just like a brief one page or one paragraph submission and stuff like that to let me look at it. I don't want to have too much to read because one, if you can't tell me your pitch quickly, then you haven't really thought about Toe it. Toe jam, mom, woman, <laughs> strong, let's go. Two of the other things I was going, I don't want to steal anybody's ideas, so I don't want right. to be reading through like hundreds. Like, and then oh, subliminally, you. Yeah, so that's right. why I'm like, just keep it. Lightsaber. Like, I got this great idea for a lightsaber. I don't know where I got this from, but. Right. <laughs> so that's why I'm like, just give me a thing. And if I find it interesting enough or different enough, that, then I'll reach out and we, we can start a conversation. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then based on what your resources and what our resources are, we'll see what we can come up together. Cool. But you are open to that. Yeah. We, uh, the, Go, uh, Jim. The, <laughs> you laughing, but watch. Well, like I said, the mark was not uh, something that I came up with. It was something that uh-huh. somebody else came up with, and we basically worked together on it. Now, when people work together, do they still own the rights to it their... De- it depend. Well, we basically break it down to this. Mm. Um, if you came up with the concept, but none of the art, then you own the... You share the intellectual property with the artist who comes up with the design. So um, if we're not involved in any of the creative process... We're just working as a f- uh, distribution and helping it as a studio. We don't. We. I don't want to own your idea if it's all yours. Mm-hmm. If we work together, then we share. Uh, so if I draw a woman, and, and she's you, got huge feet, right, and superpowers toe jam, I own that concept, right. But if you draw her, then you share it, right. Now, what if I draw this woman with the the toe jam and everything, and I say, boom, let, let's. But obviously, I can't do the whole. How does that work? Well, again, that, that's it's along the lines of uh, we gotta sh- um, see what resources we have available. Like, um, are you able to help us? If we can't afford to create the book ourselves, are you able to put money in so that we can go out and get an artist to work with? We, the the cost of an artist is, depends on a lot of different things, like the style of the art. If you're looking for something that's very cartoony, a lot of those guys will charge a lot less than if you're looking for somebody who's ultra-realistic. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, the style of art is a big factor, and people don't realize that. So before we go, what's the range? Oh, it can be anywhere from $25 a page to $400 a page wow. for an artist. And that's just so for, so and that's, that's just pencil. You got to remember that mm-hmm. when you mm-hmm. create a comic book, uh, you have the writer, the penciler, the inker, the colorist, the letter. So that's five artists just for the visual art you see. You have the so production So you're looking guy. for total project, what, three grand to 20 grand? Yeah, that's about right. That it could be, it could be right. for a 22-page book, uh, about anywhere from three grand to 20. It could, it could theoretically be more than 20 grand, but it's very rare that we're going to be working with artists right. who are at that level and not going to cut us a deal. So <laughs> someone says, okay, so I got the woman, boom, boom, boom. Here's... Here's 1500 Then you go in how, however you work that out? Well, it, it depends on whether I think it's viable or not, um, whether I think it's, there's a market for it. But, mm-hmm. yeah, if it is, I, I have helped uh, fund a bunch of other projects and stuff like that. Some of them did not take off the ground. Some of them got repurposed. Um, we have a book called Dark Bloods, which was supposed to be done for a advertising for a rapper. Mm-hmm. This guy was uh, said he was a music promoter. <laughs> And basically the deal fell through and we had ended up with a bunch of artwork that we couldn't use. Mm-hmm. So we basically went in and I, I wrote a script based just on the art that was totally mm-hmm. unrelated to the rap or anything like that. So guys, we learned who these gentlemen are. We learned about the company, the transition from working for companies and working for your own and how to, to work with them. Because a lot of people say we don't go further in how we can make collaborations or... Mm-hmm what it looks economically, so that's that kind of learning point that's really important with, with shows like this. But that's awesome. So quickly again, say the website, anything coming up, and... Uh, the8spot.com, T-H-E, the number 8spot.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a project coming up which we're hoping to announce, uh, have v- visuals and everything by New York Comic Con, which is called Debunked. Um, but, but there'll be more about that on the web soon. And... Uh, you have some upcoming projects also as uh, a freelancer? As a freelancer, uh, I'm always working on things. So uh, we're continuing working with William Shatner's Man of War, uh, which is now called the Chronicles of War. And I'm working with a company called Apex Comics Group, which they'll be doing more creator-owned projects like Phaser. Um, that's, that's all I have in my head <laughs> right now. And I do a lot of lettering for paper cut books, yeah. which are more kid-friendly books. Thank you, Eric Rivera. 
Thank you, Wilson Ramos Jr. Thank you, Ranger, for coming through. Um, I am seven, and you're watching Eclectica. And um, if you want these guys to come back, leave comments and all that other good stuff. Subscribe, like us, you know, the whole spiel. We're Eclectica. You can always find us on sevnetwork.com. If you're watching us on cable, you could watch all the past episodes. If you're seeing us online, you could always watch us on TV. All the information is on sevnetwork.com. Thank you very much, and thank you guys for coming through. Thank you. I really appreciate us. it. Had a good time. Awesome.